Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today, how the historical failings of our society harm our health today. Yeah, I know I need a haircut, but there's a pandemic going on right now, and well... If your hair is bad, don't panic. Just let it be bad for a while. As of filming this, almost 3 million people have tested positive for COVID-19, a third of them in the United States. And same disclaimer as before, after I film this, it'll be several days before it gets published, so by the time you're watching this, the numbers will be higher. Go to this website for more accurate numbers. More Americans have died of COVID-19 than who died in the Vietnam War. And whether you died of COVID-19 or died in Vietnam, one thing you have in common is that you're more likely to be black, poor, or both. In Chicago, despite being only 30% of the population and 33% of COVID-19 diagnoses, the black community accounts for 68% of COVID-19 deaths. And these same inequalities exist all over the United States in Las Vegas, South Carolina, New York, Florida, and more. If this surprises you, let me guess. You're white. This is, of course, all caused by a multitude of issues, and some of them are specific to COVID-19. For instance, there have been reports of black people being harassed and kicked out of stores for wearing masks, so it would make sense that they were reluctant to. But a lot of the biggest problems are more systematic than that. A few weeks ago, we made a video about some of the things that the COVID-19 pandemic highlights about our society. And one of them is that there are drastic inequalities in the American healthcare system. One of the reasons why black people are dying of COVID-19 at higher rates is because that community is harder hit by some of the pre-existing conditions that make COVID-19 more dangerous for you. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, black people are 20% more likely to suffer from asthma, 50% more likely to have heart disease, and 60% more likely to develop diabetes. This disparity exists as a side effect of 400 years of systematic discrimination and disenfranchisement. One of the problems is that doctors are just people, and they bring their implicit biases with them. Do you remember this picture from Governor Ralph Northam's yearbook? A quick tangent about that picture. So after initially corroborating that that was him in the picture, he then denied it. But it's in his yearbook page, so it'd be weird if he went all those years with a picture like that of someone else in there and didn't try to correct it, right? That being said, the picture's kind of grainy, so it's hard to tell who that is, so this could not be Governor Ralph Northam. It could be this person, which, you know, I think is worse. Anyway, this picture, let's remember, was in his medical school yearbook. And there were a number of other racist pictures in different parts of that yearbook, which means that not only were there enough students at that medical school who were racist enough to take these pictures, but there was also an administration that was willing to publish them. There's more, too. Check out this picture from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And this picture from Elon University. And this picture from Wake Forest University. I don't show you these to call out any person or university. I show you these to illustrate the point that for a long time there has been a culture of discrimination in this country and the medical community and doctors have been exposed to that just as much as anyone else has. According to a scientific review in the Journal of Academic Emergency Medicine, a majority of studies examined found a tendency amongst doctors to show an implicit preference for white patients, which in some studies affected their clinical decision making. Other studies have also shown that doctors are more likely to consider white patients to be cooperative and that the concerns of black patients are more likely to not be taken seriously. According to the Annals of Internal Medicine, black patients are less likely to receive healthcare treatment for cardiovascular diseases and for HIV. And wouldn't you know it, those are two diseases which disproportionately hit black communities. Like we said earlier, according to the CDC, black people are 50% more likely to develop heart disease. And even though only 12% of the U.S. population is black, 43% of HIV cases are in the black community. Another issue is that black people are much more likely to be distrustful of the healthcare system. 
Of course we white people have our fair share of people who distrust the healthcare system, but black people are more likely to distrust institutions in general and have good reason to distrust the healthcare system because of things in history like the Tuskegee experiments and of course because of the objective fact of discrimination in the healthcare system. This contributes to black people being less likely than white people to seek treatment for health conditions, and it also contributes to the popularity of people like Alfredo Bowman, also known as Dr. CB, even though he was not a doctor and from what I can find didn't even go to college, let alone medical school. Before he died in 2016, so-called Dr. CB made his money by selling Dr. CB cell food, Basically, expensive potpourri, which he claimed was a cure-all, despite having no evidence for that. He convinced many of his customers to forego medical treatment in favor of taking his cell food. And he was able to do this in no small part because he exploited the distrust that the African American community has for institutions. He sold himself as some sort of civil rights leader, but in reality he was just hurting that community even more. Definitely the biggest reason though that the African American community is so hard hit by health issues is because of wealth. In almost every country, lower wealth and lower income is linked to worse health, and that's especially true in America where medicine and healthcare can be prohibitively expensive. For centuries, and yes, even after slavery ended, there were laws, policies, and practices in place which depressed African American income and wealth. Besides the fact that the same implicit biases we talked about earlier also exist in hiring, which can be detrimental to African American incomes, there have also been a number of concrete things which have had the same effects. For a long, long time, schools were segregated, preventing black people from getting equal educations and hurting their economic opportunities. And even after Brown versus the Board of Education, the way that schools were funded by local property taxes meant that in black communities, which on average were already lower income, they had poorly funded schools. This locks people into cycles of poverty where incomes are low so schools are bad so incomes stay low so schools stay bad. African Americans are also more likely to be convicted of crimes and to be sentenced to jail time. This of course both makes it harder to raise your income and amass wealth while you're in prison obviously and after you get out. But also by taking an income away from the families left behind, it makes it harder for those families to amass wealth. Policies like redlining for years prevented black people from buying property. And even with that being illegal now, although it does sometimes still happen under the radar, History affects the present. If a white family has been buying property and amassing wealth for generations and they've been passing that down, that family is now in a better position in the present than a family that didn't have those luxuries. There are more I could go on, but if I named every way that black people were historically disadvantaged in America, then this video would be 10 hours long. What all this results in, though, is the reality on the ground, which is that according to one 2013 study, the average white family had 69 times more wealth than the average black family. And when you don't have significant savings and you make $10 an hour, it can be easy to see how you would be disadvantaged by a healthcare system where an ambulance ride costs $3,000. In my county, where an ambulance ride is relatively cheap at $1,795, that's still six weeks of work working 40 hours a week at minimum wage. We've been talking about the African American community in this whole video. But a lot of these same things apply to Latinos and Native Americans and even a lot of white people are affected by the high cost of healthcare in America. America has a serious problem with our healthcare system and minority communities are consistently the hardest ones hit. So next time someone says something stupid to you like When you say institutional racism it's too broad you at least have to name me the institution. Which one is the racist one? Now you know what to tell them. Seek Semper Tyrannus. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. You can watch another video here, and please consider subscribing here. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and please consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash lucretiareport. I'll see y'all Thursday.